Welcome to episode two of The Colors of Prague. Uh, episode one is rather long, and I apologize for that. I, it was not my intent to make it <laughs> a short feature, <laughs> a short length film. Um, first episode, yo, know, first try at this, give me a break. Um, going forward, they won't be as long as the 45 minute mini movie that one was. So what do I do here? I talk about progressive rock music, prog rock, um, discuss bands, review albums, just short, short version. Um, maybe introduce you to some music you don't know about or remind you of music you've forgotten about. Um, not everyone's into prog rock. This is for the prog rock people, I guess. Um, so my name is Lewis Ball. I should have done that in the outro, but hey. Um, so, there are many suggestions, uh, comments on the Facebook link because there was a glitch in the YouTube upload for this first episode uh, where he had a problem enabling comments. Go figure. Hopefully it will work here this time, but those of you who are my friends on Facebook, you know, please feel free to... Um, Message me if you have damning praise, or just comment if you like to. <laughs> so, without further ado, I've chosen five titles this time, and one surprise title. So I'm going to start with a band from England called Pendragon. The Masquerade Overture is one of their finest albums. It's an older album. Um, they've been around since, I believe, 78. Nick Barrett was the uh, uh, original band leader, put them together. They are definitely progressive rock, but they have lots of different things going on. There's elements of Celtic, there's elements of folk rock, classic rock. Yeah, there's that trope again. Um, it's sort of like if you're driving in, they got like a lot of songs. If you're driving in the car and that comes on the radio, hey, that's pretty cool. Let me floor that uh, pedal a little bit more. Um, they're very good. They're, they are also prolific and then they're not. They have span of time where they, they just shoot out albums and then they're off for a while. And some of their, their, their recordings are uh, two CD length, uh, sorry, two LP length, two CD length. Um, this one here it was a, a nice remaster um, from from England. I purchased this um, from Mad Fish, which is which is a distributor in the UK who I, I cannot say enough great things about. Um, if you order from Mad Fish, uh, rest assured, uh, in this pandemic, currently we're in a pandemic as of January 14, 2021, when I recorded this. I mean, shipping from the UK to anywhere in the world is problematic because of the Brexit problem and because of the pandemic. But these guys ship not only well packaged material, but very quickly. And you don't have to do the extra, like, knock on my window and tell me my package is here to charge, you know, the extra, extra thing. So the uh, Madfish is really good. So anyway, this is a really good album. I quite enjoyed it. The Masquerade Overture, as good as gold, paint box. Really, uh, people might disagree with me, but if you're unfamiliar with Pendragon, you could start here. There is a shorter affordable, more affordable CD version of this out here. Uh, Amazon does have some of their albums that you can look around on eBay, or you can order from Pendragon themselves. They do have a website, probably not the band, but someone on behalf of the band. But again, you're, you're getting from the UK, so choice is yours. Um, there was recently a multi-LP or multi-disc set, probably both, uh, Pendragon celebrating 40 years. I know some folks who have that. I do not have that as of yet, but it's it's a good, from what I've seen at the track listing, it's a good collection. So Pendragon, really good. I quite enjoy them. 
and I have other materials on them, but that was one I wanted to pick out for everyone to say, hey. Now, last time I mentioned Cherry 5, uh, which was the pre-Goblin Goblin, so let's say. So I'm going to pick a Goblin album to discuss briefly again. Roller. This is a really good one. Um, so we're all familiar with their soundtracks for Argento films and other uh, terror films and mood films and their various incarnations over the past 10, 15, 20 years. And um, Claudio Simonetti and company. So Roller was their post Cherry 5 album here. And it's it's got the classic lineup of Fabio Pagnatelli on bass. Again, I mentioned before, possibly one of the unsung bass players. Um, Augusto Marangello on drums. Massimo Morante on guitars. Claudio Simonetti, a young Claudio Simonetti, and Augusto Maurizio Guarini, also on piano. Sorry about that. Anyway, this has Roller, the title song, Aquaman, Goblin, a song called Goblin. It's an epic 12-minute song. Dr. Frankenstein. You could tell they were messing around with stuff. Now, interesting thing was this was recorded post-Deep Red. Post- the, re the recording of the soundtrack for that Argento film, the first Argento film they worked on. And so, uh, I find it very interesting. Um, the music to that film was uh, credited to Giorgio Gasolini and Goblin. So, very interesting. Um, I really like Roller. It's very percussive. It's very heavy. There's no vocals on here. Some whispered sounds, some utterances, but vocals in the way that we're not used to. The way that we are used to, they don't really appear here. Although there is a Goblin album of songs featuring just like songs, I mean, with vocals and like da di da -dee. And so, uh, Roller's very good. If you want something a little different and you aren't used to that kind of dread-filled Goblin, this is really good. But you should have this if you're a Goblin fan. If you don't, you should try to get it. Um, it is available if you search around on CD. Uh, this is a remaster, very well done, by the way. Uh, came out in the last two years. There's been many remastered versions. There's a double vinyl set, and it's 180 gram. Uh, if someone says, well, why don't you mention where you got it from? It came from Italy, from Cinebox. Cinebox. Really nice job, nice gatefold. Can't go wrong there. So, <clears throat> Neil Morris. So, Neil Morris is, to me, one of the most prolific men in prog rock. Um, he started out as a singer-songwriter, wound up working with uh, Eric Burden. Uh, in one of the versions of Eric Burden and the Animals, they toured Germany, and they toured a lot of places in Europe, and, you know, Neil Morris came, you know, he's an American, and he just was a songwriter, you know, he, he had strife in his life, he has a very interesting history, which I read about in his autobiography, Testimony. Um, so coming back, Neil started, to, he found himself, let's say, with, with assistance from places, and he started writing these albums, and then albums of worship, because it's a very, uh, deep thinking and a man who found what he thinks really will help him and his path. So uh, with that being said, uh, you know, Neil Morris has 
been in a lot of bands, uh, Transatlantic, uh, Flying Colors, the Neil Morse band, Neil Morse solo, so, solo Gratia, or Gratia, yes, and that is autographed, folks, <laughs> is one of Neil Morse's uh, more recent solo albums. Um, I just saw <laughs> that the Neil Morse band um, was in the studio uh, this week or late last week, are recording another Neil Morse album. Um, so, uh, you know, the Neil Morse core band is pretty much solo and the Neil Morse band. It is Neil Morse on the guitars and vocals, of course, and uh, keyboards. And uh, we have uh, Bill Habauer, keyboards. We have the phenomenal, uh, <laughs> dare we say it, Mike Portnoy, drums, vocals, what have you, the uh, extreme theater guy, he still works with John Petrucci, still works, still works with other dream theater people from time to time, um, he's a phenomenal member of this, and uh, Randy George, bass, occasional vocals, this is a phenomenal band. When Neil Morse has a subject that's very dear to him, he prefers it to not be a Neil Morse band project. He prefers it to be a Neil Morse project. But then the Neil Morse band plays on it. A little confusion there. As I said, the guy's incredibly pro prolific. I don't know how many albums. By the, the end of 2020, it would be quite a few, including Jesus Christ, The Exorcist. Um, which, before you scoff, is pretty good. It's it's it, there were already a couple of versions of that one the recorded version and then one they performed it live uh, with the cast, the majority of the cast. Um, it's not a ripoff of Jesus Christ Superstar. It's his reinterpretation of uh, Jesus Christ and the, and the apostles and the betrayal and etc. I'm not deeply religious person, but I respect very much because I've dabbled in many different things over the years. Mm. But I, I respect very much that he has an ability to write about this subject matter where I still find it entertaining and the songs hummable and hookling. This guy writes hooks like crazy. Um, sometimes I, I would say the subject matter I, I'm sharing Thoughts I've seen online uh, from people who really like Neil Morris but kind of get a little twingy when the subject matter gets a little religious. Um, I don't mind. The songs are good. The songs are good. This is a double album set. Or if you've got the CD, uh, probably a two CD set. Um, this was a. You can order it from Neil, radiantrecords.com. Radiant records.com um, where you he has much of his backlog available uh, also some upcoming material and he also has a Neil Morris uh, thing you could subscribe to for a very very reasonable monthly price like 10 11 dollars maybe it's gone up to 15 where you could download like a song he'll write today, a song he'll, like I said, the guy's prolific. This is really good. This is definitely prog rock. And this is uh, really good modern progressive rock. I, I really enjoyed this one. I think you would, too. Um, so, I recommend it. Getting near the end, folks, for this much shorter show, The Utopia Strong. What is this? So, Kavis Tarabi, who's in the current version, incarnation, sorry, of Gong, uh, the post David Allen, he was in the band Gong with David Allen, uh, and then when David passed on, he encouraged Kavis and the other members of the band to keep going as Gong. So they've, been, they've had a couple of releases uh, since David Allen passed. Those are Kevis's, like Neil Morris that I just said, he's 
all over the place. And he has a lot of different things, views of music. And um, the Utopia Strong is one of his side projects. Uh, they're on to their second or third after this. This only came out early 2020. And really, they have a third one due early 2021. So two in 2020, including this title. It's a self-title. Um, it's eerie, shimmering, percussive, hypnotic, psychedelic, very progressive, uh, very cool, very nice. I got this from Cabas. You can also get it uh, through Bandcamp uh, if it's still available. Again, though, it's coming from, uh, I believe, Europe, the UK, I think. Very nice, progressive rock, mainly instrumental. Oh, they just swirly colors. <clears throat> so stepping back a bit, I mentioned last time PFM. Premiatia Forneria Marconi, or PFM for sure, as they're known to everyone in the prog progressive rock circles as PFM. So I, I have quite a lot of their material. I think I have 90 plus percent of everything they've recorded and released. No. <laughs> Every time I turn around, there's something I didn't know about. So I was looking for something else very recently, which is why I kind of slammed this one into this show on eBay, of all places. And sometimes original material from PFM, whether it's vinyl or early CDs, are kind of pricey. And I'm not going to do a buyer's guide. I mentioned last time, it's, it's, it's quite, a, quite a bit. So I was looking for something else, and then I saw someone had this for like $15. This is PFM. It's a four CD set. It's a collection of early live recordings. Uh, one CD is devoted to 71 to 72, another 73 to 74, 75 to 76, and one goes 77 to 81. Really, really interesting stuff, and I may have mentioned last time, if I, I fear repeating myself, a lot of these Italian bands, and they're an Italian band, a lot of these Italian, and one of my favorites too, a lot of these Italian bands like to do covers of uh, UK and American progressive rock band um, material. So there's King Crimson songs on here, and there's covers of uh, quite a few, Tull, and I mentioned the, the Prog Rock box set last time, and that had some performances by members of Toll and King Crimson in it. And, um, and that was pretty recent. That, that was a live performance uh, playing with other Italian bands. I guess they don't really release their live cover versions. Their, yes, their live cover versions here uh, because it's complicated, right? And there's a thing called royalties. But this has some nice versions of uh, Tull, King Crimson stuff. This box set is 10 years live, PFM. And it's from Italy on the RTI music label from 96. I, I, I hazard to guess this is <laughs> incredibly out of print. The guy was unloading his, some of his early prog, uh, European prog, and I'm looking for something else, and boom. And, you know, sometimes you bid on something on eBay, and you just wake up and, I bid $15, I'm going to win that, nobody wants it. You wake up the next day and it sells for 650 bucks. I've seen that happen. So, this is very good. I highly recommend this to all PFM fans, if you go find it. Um, you can also... Contact me for more information about the label, but again, look at the box. You might see it on eBay or through other collector sites. Finally, I don't have physical media for this one, so I could sh to show you a image of the uh, CD or or album. The band uh, has just released. On Bandcamp, I believe tomorrow the CD, uh, there might be an LP, has come out. Thulu Dread. 
the New Jersey Progressive Arts Collective uh, is, is one group, unless they change their name in the last few weeks, uh, Reed Reimer and other musicians have put together this Lovecraftian work. Uh, quite a few people are involved in this. It's a story inspired by Lovecraft and then inspired by other things. Uh, it's got a very freaky cover. I do have a, a JPEG of the uh, cover of this. It's, it's very lengthy and incorporates soundscapes, uh, very much progressive rock, metal, and we all know a lot of the new prog rock bands are filled with guys who were early incarnations were metal bands and they like to play prog rock and now they're more prog and vice versa. Some prog bands become metal bands. You know, it's interchangeable. Uh, so, Thulu dreamt just the Lovecraftian spelling T C T H U L U dreamt. Thanks a lot. Um, very good. I very much enjoy that. They're on Bandcamp. I will post the link somewhere so you guys can check it out for yourself. Possibly order. It's very affordable. Um, download it. The uh, it's available for download. It's available for purchase for the uh, actual item. So that's it for today's show. Mercifully short. I hope you liked it. Stay well. Stay safe. Until next time. Bye.